and in summer he will come himself to my house and take me to his house and we used to work. Um, uh, one by one, uh, facing each other, for one and a half year, we worked this building, saw the construction on, and worked all details, everything. I don't think there can be any, any good opportunity for an architect to learn such a thing from a legend of that nature. He was a very gentle, noble man, probably uh, very human, and that is how he could create architecture for humanity by large. Whereas it is said that Karbuzi only has uh, high buildings you know, and, and heroic buildings, very expensive and so on. But here was the man, P. John Array, who created architecture for the masses, for the humanity at a human level. Next. He and Charles Perrin uh, in France, they, they both tied up in Corbusier's office when they were there. And his furniture is known or one. We could not really value this furniture. And whenever it is broken, it is thrown out. But now the foreign agencies are buying it and making lakhs and crores of rupees by selling this uh, furniture. They go repair a bit and sell it piece by piece, mm -hmm. saying that this is the only piece by Kabuze. Next. <laughs> yes. Yeah, now there was a remark on that furniture by M.S. Randhawa that he has told the people, oh, oh, beautiful is going an ordinary way. He has told that there is a way to culture and art <coughs> rather than only a very, very financially high life. Next. No, this, this slide is very interesting. Both the cousins built the, the Chandigarh. Uh, Lee Kerbuzi and Perry Jarrah. Uh, Kerbuzi is a very lofty in stature as well as in flight of imagination. Uh, John Ray was uh, small in stature, maybe small in his flight, so far the architecture is concerned. But nevertheless, he fought for his right and his uh, place <laughs> in architecture which he achieved. Next. Well, this is uh, uh, the last thing. We stayed here for 17 years, John Ray only. So Guzir used to come twice a year, but he stayed from day one for 17 years. And he had established such a love <coughs> for this area, for Indians, for the culture of this country, and the way they deal. Uh, that he wanted that after his death his ashes should be submerged in Sukhna Lake. That is which being done in this picture. Next. Well, this is the same with Perry in Geneva. Next. Next. Now, talking about Lee Kurbuzie, he he was a law sort of teacher because opportunity to work with him came very late. I had worked with the other three and uh, when this came, in fact I have uh, really inevitable yeah, effect as genres architecture on me which I follow till date. But Kurbuzi's architecture we try to follow in spirit if not copy him. Nobody could copy him. So this picture shows that it is not that he could build only a very high and expensive building, but he built a house for his mother, which is so very minimal. A little house at the bank of the Geneva Lake, where 
I was there for uh, some time and uh, this is his brother, uh, Albert John Ray, a musician. Actually, Kadushi was uh, uh, born with the uh, artistic sensibilities, a family of artists, uh, and of course a genius himself. Yes. Now, this I need not to explain very much because these buildings you have seen. I only want to say that uh, this modern buildings, which are very difficult to digest right at the first uh, visit, but the more you go closer to them, the more you know and study, <coughs> you really find that yes, this is a piece of art worth preserving. Next. You have seen all this, probably you have been inside the assembly building. Yes. Yes. So, I just took sort of a notes. Next. Uh, there is a book these days available. Uh, uh, Kaduja didn't like any decorations in his buildings. Right from the first day. In fact, he started modern movement in opposition of this conventional uh, architecture, uh, which he thought is not in line with the present day life. And he always looked for very apt solutions for the present life. Uh, and they say, well, he thinks he is dislike uh, uh, decorations and he always objected to that, but there is certain ways that he used decorations, like this color is a, is a sort of decoration which he did. And there are many uh, reliefs which he has used in uh, Naikot building and uh, assembly building, which he used to sort of embed in the concrete, uh, a hand, a camel or many other you know, such things, and only drawn by the laborers. So he saw this and he says it's a very good piece of uh, art, <coughs> why not have them? <coughs> and uh, uh, I think by this they have established immortality for those laborers who created that. Next. So this is uh, uh, one building which I wanted to show that I was on this building with him. Uh, using my art gallery. He has done probably four art galleries in the world and this is supposed to be the best. One at Ahmedabad and another at Tokyo. No, three rather, not the fourth one. And this is the best. Uh, well, do you have seen this? Not yet. Well, well maybe the opportunity comes to, so you can see tomorrow. Next. This is a, another bird in city museum. Uh, this is a prototype of uh, uh, Kabuzia's uh, uh, sort of pavilion, which is now known as Kabuzia Center there itself uh, in Switzerland. We had this prototype in spirit, but followed to have this in concrete and not in metal and uh, colorful plates. It's a very, very difficult question. How to copy or even follow the master <coughs> and try to create that sort of proportions which may sustain. And uh, of course, some of the program was changed. We had some more levels created <coughs> within. And, uh, uh, but by the end of the day, uh, it's considered that it has come out very well. Mm. Next. The other building I happened to do was this Museum of Evolution of Life. Uh, it's very close in the same campus. Uh, some interiors and uh, exteriors. Uh, no, it's fine. Good. Uh, uh, as a town planner, this is the total scale if you take this. This whole town is like a 
And then right up to that, we got to this, yes. Yeah, it's a total square. <coughs> we started with the square. We started with, it, with geometry. And then details that geometry into the smallest uh, um, things of the city, maybe the street pattern, the section of the street, and uh, the houses, their sections, and other buildings which he has done himself in the city. Of course, I very few. Yes. As a sculptor, he did many sculptures, but uh, very strangely, uh, his buildings are no less than a sculpture himself because, for example, I have shown that uh, corner of the assembly building there, the exterior of the assembly building and the opener. They are all in a way pieces of sculpture. Don't you know? Yeah. <laughs> Next. Uh, as a painter, and all, he, he painted uh, uh, the or the gate of the assembly building and other tapestries. The yes. question is, he used to say that an architect without the art uh, in build, then only it's a total statement. And this is what he showed uh, in the buildings which he designed in Jimmy Yes. Uh, this I have already explained. These are some of the my works, uh, which uh, are my friends from Chandigarh. <laughs> May not be a, a new thing to look at, but uh, for my Malaysian friends. Of course, I have given that book, which he can circulate among other friends later on. Uh, these are covered. Uh, somehow I have known that even that modernism was being followed in Chandigarh. I happened to do this building which people accused me that said it's more Wrightian than Kabuzian. Uh, how could you do this? Uh, but it was really well taken because John Ray protected me always. He said, well, where he has placed in the campus to mellow the surrounding of crude right angle structures everywhere. This mellows down the atmosphere. What's wrong with it? It should be built. So it was built that way. Next. Now the question came up housing. Here again, uh, I created some problem for myself because this sort of uh, uh, terrace housing was not done in Chandigarh before. I started this. Because these open <coughs> terraces was the need at that time. People didn't have uh, 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 what you call uh, uh, this air conditioning, uh, not even coolers, what to talk of air conditioners. So the terrace used to be the extension of the space being used otherwise. And uh, this is all which was created, then it was repeated by many architects. Next. You can appreciate the, the, the beauty of bricks. It's warm, no maintenance, and it sustains itself. Uh, these are some of the other buildings designed. Next. Um, another building, it's a pavilion or pavilion. But all the vocabulary of Kurbuzi about it. This undulatory glazing, what we call, uh, is, is, is one medium which he uh, invented, used extensively in Chandigarh buildings. And Jandri also used in his buildings in university. Next. I happen to do this uh, Sikh temple. Uh, it was uh, uh, sort of a uh, uh, little away from the traditional design of the temple. Uh, luckily, the, 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 the Sava, the people responsible to build this, they took it very nicely. 
uh, well, they said that in Chandigarh, why not? There is a, a new modern type of uh, temple, see temple, which talks about the turban of a saint. And uh, it's a symbolic architecture. Next. Next, this is the Rotary. Next. Uh, this is what I built in uh, Ahmedabad. Uh, this is a Sarabhai Hall. Uh, only for you to see the type of architecture it is. Next. Uh, another uh, satellite center. Uh, next. Uh, there we tried, uh, probably in here, uh, 74, 75, the use of uh, these uh, um, ash blocks, ash and cement mixed blocks. These days people talk too much of sustainability, only to protect the world from the natural calamities, the natural resources being depleted, and that depletion of natural resources is uh, making the man, compelling the man to have renewable materials. And in 74, 75, it was a conscious attempt and we used uh, all the material and use it so innovatively for various things. Sometimes the acting is a jari, sometimes it is it's written as pressure transducer center, it's in the Department of Space. Uh, next. Uh, now this is uh, some Prachin Kara uh, theater. Uh, Mr. Baga, who is sitting here, he has long time written a very wonderful book on Terry Genre and Kalbuzi's work. And uh, I don't know, he, he happened to have this building in his book. Uh, great one. Uh, well, thank you. This speaks of the total uh, vocabulary of Chandigarh. Uh, the louvers, the brick use, the geometry, even in plan and section and details. Next. This is another building in Chandigarh. Again, a problem which I created for me, side. Like Karbuzi created problems by himself all his life. And he told us, do whatever you feel like with total freedom of mind. Don't copy anybody. He said, you should not be afraid of anybody by following your thought. And this is what I have been doing in my life. You should do the same thing. So this is another burden. Uh, uh, or, uh, this is a convent uh, <coughs> school auditorium. First time in Chandigarh, probably the last time, this sort of structure is done with the trusses on top of the building supporting the roof and section everywhere. It's a total modular, total building and plan, elevation sections everywhere. Next. Next. This is another uh, building. Now, this is the benefit of uh, my Malaysian friend who will see the book maybe after a long time. Uh, I have been using concrete or brick in my buildings all over and nothing else so far. Next. Next. Now, another building. Periodic hospital. I am only showing the type of uh, architect with the influence of Kurbuzi and Yolari I could do, and that's what uh, you are seeing. Next. 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 No, you can skip over my work. Next. Let them assess themselves, and uh, I am only trying to show. This is in Lucknow, an auditorium. Uh, the roof structure is, is a technical outcome uh, 
of the whole study, not as a decorative thing, because where the auditorium goes like this, where there is a space, lesser span, the, the, the truss is lesser height and uh, when the span goes bigger, the truss is bigger. And that sort of outcome uh, 